To reshape landscapes, engineers must defy nature's considerable powers. Despite their reliance on manpower rather than machinery, the Victorians were hugely successful at it. Cumbrian-born Sir Thomas Bouch described his engineering works as being of a light and inexpensive character, an admirable quality, but one which ruined his reputation after 75 souls were lost when his bridge across the Tay failed in a violent storm on the evening of the 28th of December 1879. The inquiry concluded that the structure was badly designed, badly built and badly maintained. Bouch passed away within a year. He epitomised everything which was good and everything which was bad in Victorian civil engineering. He was extremely ingenious, extremely hard-working, but he was also, if any criticism could be made of him, he was over-ambitious and he was also regarded as a risk-taker. Um, when you look at the works um, he, he completed in Cumbria, north of England and southern Scotland, lots of those lines um, were very efficient. The Cockermouth, Keswick and Penrith Railway was one of them. Opened in 1864, it boasted 135 bridges along its 31 mile length. Most noteworthy being the three and a half mile section between Keswick and Threlkeld, with two short tunnels and eight striking wrought iron bowstring structures over the meandering River Greeter. But nature had not finished demolishing Boucher's legacy. When Storm Desmond hit the Lake District in December 2015, it washed away two of those bridges and did its best to wreck a third. The well-used railway path occupying the former track bed was severed and tourism took an unwelcome hit. More than half of the customers visiting local businesses used the path every day, and a study found that reconnecting it would inject £2 million annually into the local economy. There was then an incentive to progress the job of reinstatement, with contractor Cubby Construction set that task, courtesy of a £7.9 million funding package. The logistics have been challenging, a function of the largely remote and linear site constraints. Temporary access roads and storage compounds have had to be created to serve two bridge replacements, an abutment repair, path realignment and tunnel excavation. Even Boucher's surviving bridges have benefited. So we're upgrading those bridges, we've had um, some subcontractors in Total Solutions who, uh, who have wrapped the bridges, shot blasted them, uh, painted them and they're looking in great condition now, they're like, they're like new. Two of the structures are new, courtesy of Beaver Bridges. Low Pearson's bridge was completely destroyed by Storm Desmond. Repairs to its abutments were undertaken last autumn and a replacement span launched into place in April. Brundholm Bridge suffered a similar fate, the swollen river having such an impact that the new span is 20 metres longer than the old one. We've got a 35 ton tr crane in to manoeuvre manoeuvre the bridges on a, on a flatbed trailer down to the, the bridge positions. We've installed um, Kazan rings to, to form a new abutment um, and then we had a crane down, down by the bridges and, and we, we sectioned it in and pieced it. So it, it was a lengthy process but we've tried to keep them the same sort of shape and style as the previous bridges. Between the two new structures, part of the railway embankment was washed away, necessitating the construction of a 200 metre long section of offline path. Bank stabilisation and protection works have been carried out at various locations. The damaged abutment at Rawsom's Bridge has already been secured, with the repairs to be completed this summer. And then there's Big Tunnel, burrowing beneath the A66 for 92 yards. It was filled in and buried following the railway's closure in 1972, but with an ambition to improve the path, not just reinstate it, 4,000 tonnes of material have been excavated to bring it back into use. A long-standing aspiration to see trains return to Keswick has been boosted recently by political support and engagement with the Department of Transport. In the meantime, walkers and cyclists should be able to enjoy the route again when the upgraded railway path fully reopens in December. <laughs>